So tell me about a fusion engine. We're talking about fusion propulsion. Yeah. So there's two things that you can do with fusion if you can do it. So if you can't do fusion, obviously you can't do anything with it. Yeah. Um, but we can do fusion. And one is to obviously build a power station because we really need that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you can do is create extremely fast exhaust speeds. Uh, and that would be a propulsion system, yeah. um, which is what we focus on here. Um, and that's not because we don't think that fusion for energy isn't the most wonderful thing. It is, but sometimes, I think, not always, sometimes you want to invest with the Fed. Uh, and there are some federal size projects like ITER, um, which need to be very big and will cost a lot of money and a lot of investment. And sometimes the government's the best position to do that. Sure. If you put too much private money into a project like that, you can, people can get hurt. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, going back to if you if we can do as a species fusion, um, and you see that we can, which we can, um, then fusion for propulsion is inevitable, because uh, we have a similar issue in in space propulsion where. You know, we can set fire to things um, as a launch technology, yeah. which in the atmosphere is likely to remain the technology for launching heavy rockets into orbit. Yeah. Um, but once you're in space, space is a very big place. And to move meaningful distances, uh, you need a much more efficient type of propulsion um, uh, source. And now we build electric propulsion here, and that's very efficient. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't give you the kick for, um, to give you that acceleration. It's very good for deorbiting and maintaining orbit and station keeping, even deorbiting. De um, but if you wanted to, say, go to Mars, uh, you don't really want to have to have massive fuel tanks that you have to refuel all the time. And, yep. and also, the actual exhaust speeds created by combustion aren't fast enough. Yeah. Although it may, may be amazingly quick relative to where we are on Earth, but in space, uh, we need something quicker. So we're talking about going to Mars in, you know, 45 days rather than Well, the, these years. calculations are all depending <laughs> on, you know, slowing down the, how, the weight. That, there's, I, you know, it, what we know is it's a hell of a lot quicker yeah. if you're using nuclear. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, I guess... We're not talking about uh, going off to Andromeda or another galaxy because, you know, you're talking about hundreds of millions of light years <laughs> yeah. and even going at 99% the speed of light, mm -hmm. you would still be on a spacecraft for 100 million years yeah. and maybe humans aren't designed for travelling meaningful distances through space. Yeah. Um, not to say that we won't <laughs> uh, through another method, but yeah. um, in terms of sending bodies... Yes through long distances, say, cis lunar, Mars, um, we want to be as fast as possible. We need to get those exhaust speeds up yeah. uh, and efficiency up. Mm. Uh, and that's why fusion propulsion is the, the perfect candidate for that. So it's also because of the amount of fuel you would need to carry with fusion, right? Yes. So exhaust speeds in space are pretty much... Um, they are their money um, yeah. <laughs> because if I can save you time I can save you uh, all the equipment that you don't need to have for the journey time I can save you weight and that means you need less weight to launch and that mm -hmm. equation is something called the delta V where the more weight the more fuel the more fuel the more weight and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger the space if you can reduce that then again it, it goes in your favor so uh, we have to get faster exhaust speeds and um, and that is why we're, we're so focused on fusion propulsion for those bringing down those mission times which is so important so how would we get to Andromeda or, or a different galaxy? <laughs> so it's uh, very unlikely that we are going to develop a technology that um, could get us, as I said, even if we could get to near light speed. Mm -hmm. Not only would that really not help us because space is so huge, but also that kind of radiation in space. It just, time and our, our bodies are just doesn't seem to be built for it. I think if you were to ask someone maybe like 100 years ago, how do you, quickly do you think in future we'll be able to get like a message to Australia? Yeah. They might say, um, well, maybe humans will build a boat with like 10 engines on it uh, and uh, they would just get there in like three hours. Yeah. It'd be so fast. 
they wouldn't think to say, we'll have this little phone that you just send a text message with a picture of your face and it's there immediately. Yeah, we're limited because it's by not what in we there. Know. You know. Yeah. And the reason that that makes sense is because it doesn't make sense to have to send a physical object to Australia. It just, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's much easier to send um, a message via a telecommunication system. Um, through space, we might be able at some point to download what's in here and send that meaningful disk because particles um, without going too much into special relativity don't behave they don't play the game mm. of uh, physics in, in the larger scale of planets they just play, they're playing a kind of they're, they're using a different type um, they live in this kind of different dimension almost where they can just pop across the universe yeah. and really um, so imagine that we could download Sophie mm -hmm. and say we could do that yeah. and we're going to suddenly maybe we could 3D print you another body and I'm not advocating 3D printing for this that's just I don't know some technology we make yeah. you a set and you go yep I'm happy with the Sophie that I'm gonna that's being built on this other planet yeah. by another human civilization and we go okay we're now gonna send you your consciousness over uh, through some kind of quantum leap yeah. and it goes across the universe and suddenly you're there and you look up and you go wow it's a whole new set of stars and I can yep this is my 3D Sophie, printed body is good. I have a on my hand and <laughs> I can remember this podcast and I can remember what I had for breakfast. I can remember what it tastes. Yeah. What breakfast tasted like. You know, mm. I, I have all my memories. Would you be happy with us? Would you say, yep, Richard, thank you so much? Or would you, would you be satisfied that we had sent you? Given that my actual body's left on Earth. Yes. Yeah. I think I would consider that myself sent. I think you're life and no refunds no no refunds from me <laughs> <laughs> i think your life is based on your experiences not your physical self so i think your experiences are what makes you so i would consider myself sent a happy a happy space <laughs> happy customer okay but what Five if you then <laughs> learned that we actually didn't delete the sophie on earth yeah and my consciousness was still in that sophie well, I think she would just live her best life on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just have Earth Sophie, Space Sophie, and they would just be two two parts of the same journey, I guess. But yeah, I would still it's a different person, right? Different, different experiences. This also now. avoids, as we said, special relativity. And without going into that on a twenty-minute podcast, I think for people that are interested in time dilation, if you can, I would recommend looking at the light clock experiment. And you don't, I wouldn't worry too much about the math. You can do the math, but the, just really getting that thought experiment to your head is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Um, because it does, I mean, someone once said I think, that time is only to stop everything from happening all at once. Yeah. And because we are traveling through space time at the same speed relative to each other, mm -hmm. we don't really have to worry about that. Yeah. And it gives us this sort of experience. But as we start playing with, you know, as we start traveling meaningful distances in space and we start um, talking about downloading consciousness and things like that, yeah. I think it starts to become quite an interesting thought experiment. Whether or not that anything we've spoken about will be the way, it's just an yeah. interesting discussion. <laughs>